Hello, fifth graders. Today is February 25th, Thursday. If you see my daughter around anywhere, you can wish her a happy birthday. It's time to check our bell work. So a whole bunch of multiplication and division and there's addition and subtraction. I know you gotta keep it all straight. Remember to fix your answers if you get them wrong, okay? You should have all these done already. So number one, seven eighths times four ninths. Multiplication, I do not need a common denominator. But I should look to see if I can cross simplify first. And this one, I can. I see a four and an eight, and four goes into four once and into eight twice. So seven times one is seven, and two times nine is 18, and seven eighteenths is our answer. For number 12, it's 11 minus three fourths. Now I, I bet you this is one you could do in your head. Pretend I put this up on the board for a number talk. If you have 11 and you take three fourths away, what do you have left? Well, you would have 10 and one fourth. Isn't 10 and one fourth plus three fourths 11? Yes. If you wanted to map this out, you could do 11 minus three fourths and you'd have to borrow from the 11 and make it 10 and we have four fourths over here. Four fourths minus three fourths is one fourth and 10 minus nothing is 10. But try to make sure that you're always checking out the problem saying, is this one that I could do in my head? For number three, it's addition. I do need a common denominator and I'm gonna ask myself, is there something I can multiply the lower number by to get the higher denominator? Yes, five times two is 10. So I'm gonna multiply four fifths by two over two. Four times two is eight. Five times two is 10. So I have eight tenths plus seven tenths, which eight plus seven is 15 tenths. Now this can be changed into a mixed number. 10 goes into 15 once, and there's five left over out of 10. And yes, we know that five tenths is equal to one half. So you should have one and a half for your final answer for number three. For number four, I have nine twelfths minus five twelfths. With subtraction, I do need a common denominator, and thankfully we already have one. So I can just do nine minus five, which is four, and my denominator is 12. Four twelfths should not be your final answer though, because four goes into both of those. So after you divide them both by four, your final answer should be one third. If you had four twelfths, you have an equivalent answer, but it's just not the simplified answer. So make sure you simplify it. Number five is addition. And when we're adding, we do need a common denominator. So I'm gonna ask myself, can I multiply the lower denominator by something to get the higher? And the answer is yes. Three times five is 15. So I can solve seven fifteenths plus, two times five is 10 fifteenths. And seven plus 10 is 17, and I keep my denominator. That is improper. So 15 goes into 17 one time. There are two left over out of 15. So one and two fifteenths should be your final answer. For number six, this is multiplication. I don't need a common denominator, but I do wanna see if I can cross simplify first. And I see the six and the nine, and I do know that three goes into both of those, right? Six divided by three is two, and nine divided by three is three. I can't do anything with the five and the 11 though, so now we can just multiply. Five times three is 15, and two times 11 is 22, and there's not a number other than one that goes into 15 and 22. So that one is done. All right, now we're moving on to division. And we talked a great deal yesterday about the fact that when you are dividing and you have numbers that aren't gonna come out to nice whole numbers, that you can use the inverse operation of multiplication and multiply by that fancy word. Can you think of it? It is reciprocal. So eight divided by one ninth means, I wanna know how many one ninths there are in eight. I can get this answer by doing eight times the reciprocal of one ninth. So the reciprocal of one ninth would be nine over one, and nine over one is the same as nine. So the answer to number seven should be 72. And think about it, one whole would have nine one ninths in it, right? So if one has nine, then eight would have eight times nine. It just makes sense, doesn't it? All right, for number eight, I have one fourth divided by eight. So with this one, I can solve this as one fourth times the reciprocal of eight. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. The reciprocal means I'm supposed to switch the numerator and denominator and this one doesn't have a denominator. Yes, it does. Eight is the same as eight over one. So I would multiply one fourth by one eighth. 
and get 1 over 32. That should be your final answer. And if you think about it, if you have 1 fourth, so like you don't have to draw this, but if you have 1 fourth and I divide that by 8, I'd be cutting this up into 8 pieces and I would end up with one out of, I'd have to cut all of those into eight. So eight, 16, 24, 32. I'd have one out of the 32. Okay, for number nine, one divided by 80. Now maybe you're just thinking, well, one divided by 80, that's just one over 80, because that means one divided by 80. That is just fine. The multiplication problem you're actually solving, the inverse would be one times one over 80. And yeah, if you have one times one over 80, one times anything is that other number, right? Okay, number 10, moving right along. Six divided by one eighth. So if you take six and divide it by one eighth, I'm asking you how many eighths there are in six. And I know there's eight in one. So in six, there would be six times eight is 48. Six times eight is 48. So we multiplied by the reciprocal because eight over one is the same as eight. Number 11, one eighth divided by seven. I'm gonna go ahead and say one eighth times and remember, the reciprocal of seven would be one seventh. So I would get one over 56 for our final answer. The last one, four divided by 15. Yes, that was like number nine above it. Maybe you're just saying, well, it's four fifteenths. Four divided by 15, four divided by 15. We're getting that because this is the same thing as four times one fifteenth. So four fifteenths is our final answer. Thanks for watching. You're done with your bell work.